Welcome to my lecture online. Here's a very interesting problem from the advanced JEE test and it deals with angular momentum and yes it's a little tricky here you have to be very careful with this one. So let's read it together and see how we can solve that. A uniform circular disc of 50 kilograms and radius 0.4 meters is rotating with an angular velocity of 10 radians per second about its own axis which is vertical. Two uniform circular rings, each of mass 6.25 kilograms and radius 0.2 meters, are gently placed symmetrically on the disc in such a manner that they are touching each other along the axis of the disc and are horizontal. Assume that friction keeps the rings at rest relative to the disc. The new angular velocity in radians per second of the system is, and we're looking for an integer from 1 to 9. All right, so let's make a drawing of this. And uh, so here we have a disc, and the radius of the disc is 0 0.4 meters. Now notice that that radius of the disc is twice the radius of the rings, because then we're going to place two rings on the disc that will look like this. Make sure I got this right in the middle. Let me go just a little bit further, right, right there. There's the axis of rotation of the disc. And so we're going to then place two rings on the disc, one ring over here and another ring over here. And let's say that those rings have a radius r equals 0 0.2 meters, then the ring of the disc, uh, the radius of the disc, would then be 2r. Notice that the mass of the disc is 50 kilograms and it has initial omega, omega initial equal to 10 radians per second. Like so, and notice that the mask of the ring, the mass of the ring is equal to 6.25 kilograms. Let's make this big M for the disc, mass of the disc. And notice that 50 divided by 6.25 is exactly 8. So that means that the mask of the disc is equal to eight times the mass of the ring, the mass of the ring. All right, so how do we solve this problem? Well, first of all, we realize that we're going to have L initial equals L final. The angle of momentum initial must equal the angle of momentum final. And by definition, angle of momentum is equal to moment of inertia times omega. So we can say that I initial times omega initial is equal to I final times omega final. But before we calculate this thing here, we have to understand what is the angular momentum, not the angular momentum, the moment of inertia of a ring. Notice what we have to do is we have to use the parallel axis theorem, that I of the ring is equal to I of the center mass plus m times d squared. d would be the displacement. So if we have a ring at the center, the i of the center mass would simply be m r squared. But then we displace it a distance r away, so that would be plus m r squared again, or 2 m r squared for a single disk, and so i of two rings would be equal to 4m r squared. So that's how we find the moment of inertia of the two rings after they place on the disk. That's important, so we have to use the what we call the parallel axis theorem that we have to use. So now we can go back over here. We're trying to find omega final. And so we're looking for this. So we're looking for omega final equals omega initial times the ratio of i initial divided by i final. And we know that omega initial is equal to 10 radians per second. And now we have to multiply that times I initial, which is the I of the disk, which is going to be uh, one half the mass of the disk, which is eight times the mass of a, of a ring, times two times the radius squared, because we're going to call that 2R, because we're going to call the radius of the ring 1R. And we're going to divide that by, here we have 1 half times 8m times 2r squared plus the moment of inertia of the two rings, which is going to be 4m 
r squared. So this is then 10 times the radius per second, or 10 radians, 10 radians per second times, let's see here, we have 4 times 8, which is 32, divided by 2, which is 16 m r squared, divided by 16 m r squared, plus 4 m r squared, like so. And of course, you can see that the r squareds cancel out, the m's cancel out, that's why we expressed one in terms of the other, it makes it easy. So this becomes 10 radians per second, multiplied times 16 over 20, which is 8 over 10, which becomes 8 radians per second, which is the final answer. So we're looking for an integer from 1 to 9. The answer in this case would be 8, 8 radians per second. And again, the only way you're going to get this problem right is by using the parallel axis theorem for the moment of inertia of the rings. You take a ring, put it right there, find that moment of inertia of the center mass, and then move it a distance r, and then you have to add the plus md squared term to that to get the proper value for the moment of inertia of the rings. If you don't do that, you don't get the right answer, and hmm, yeah, that would be a tragedy if you're trying to do well in this test. How long does it take to do a problem like this? Clearly, it took more than three minutes. How much? How long did it take? Well, this is a little bit under seven minutes. About six thirty. About six minutes. While yeah, you're trying to do all this in three, so you have to go very quick. Immediately realize that you have to use the parallel axis theorem. Calculate this, and then it's good to take these ratios so that you know that the mass of the disk is eight times the mass of the ring and that the radius of the disk is twice the radius of the ring. That makes things a little bit, as, a little bit faster to calculate and that, that's how you do it. Another very interesting problem.